We've looked at nine bad action figures based on movies. Now, let's look at number 10. And this time, we're going to hop down the road with Roger Rabbit. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you with a pocket full of carrots. At least, that's what I told her. So, what are we going to do today? Well, it's episode 10 for our search for the worst action figure line based on a movie. This is it, guys. Episode 10. This is the 10th episode series, and this is it, the final episode. But don't worry. Come back next Tuesday where you can find out how you can vote for the worst action figure line based on a movie. And we're not just going to let you vote just for an action figure line that we reviewed here. You get to vote on worst packaging, the worst looking figures, the worst quality, the worst every category we talk about here, you're going to get your have your say in that also. Also next Tuesday we're going to do a recap show because there's a lot of action figures in this line that you guys told me you wanted to see that didn't make the list. Going to tell you why some didn't make the list and why some should have made a list but didn't. Had to narrow it down to 10. Maybe some should have been on here that wasn't. But next Tuesday, you can vote for the worst action figure. Yeah. Next Tuesday, you can vote for the worst action figure line based on a movie on our recap show. So don't think just because this is the last episode, it's the end of the series. I hope to turn this whole search of videos into a whole series. This time, we're looking at the worst movies based on an action figure line. Gonna take some weeks off, come back for another search, and we're gonna search for something else. Maybe the best movie action figure line? Maybe the best cartoon action figure line? Who knows, but we're gonna be in search of a lot of things. And I wanna thank you all for watching because this series has turned out really good. But anyway, we'll save that for the recap show next week. What are we gonna talk about this week? Well, we're gonna find out who framed Roger Rabbit. Now, before we get into all that, as always, you want to support this channel, please head over to Patreon. Links in there or in the description below. There you become a Patreon supporter, get exclusive content, deals on t-shirts, and a lot more stuff over there. And as always, you can go to thatjunkman.com, buy some cool t-shirts like this Space Giants t-shirt right here. Uh, okay, don't like doing that. I've been trying to cut back on those because I know they get annoying after a while, but I throw them in every now and then or some links up here anyway because it really helps the channel. Okay, now, before we look at the Roger Rabbit action figure line, let's go over how we're going to rank these figures by looking at episode one. You watch this series, you know all this, but again, this is for anyone new to the series. And if you're new to the series, you need to go back with episode one or just watch them backwards. So now, here I am again from episode one explaining how we're going to do this series. First up, we're going to look at the look of the action figure. Does the action figure look like what we see in the movie? Do they dress the same? Does it look like the actors that the film's based on? Then I'm going to look at the play value. Are these figures worth playing with as a kid? Would kids enjoy playing with something like this, even if maybe they don't look like what they do in the movie? Then I'm going to rate the marketing. Did the toy company time it right? Did they release the action figures way too early to where the time the movie came out no one cared? Or did they release the action figures way too late where kids just moved on and didn't care either way? And then I'm going to rate packaging. To sell kids on action figures, you got to catch their eye. And the packaging does that. Look at the vintage Star Wars action figure cards. Your eyes are going to connect with the package and it's going to call kids to pick up the action figure, look at it, and decide if they want it. And last, I'm going to rate the quality. Do these figures hold up? Sure, we can all buy an action figure and stand it up somewhere and it will last for a couple years. But does it stand up to kids throwing them off dressers and against the wall? Thank you, Junk Man. That's how we're going to rank this series. Fun, right? And something else I hadn't, I failed to mention in the last couple episodes, if you're new to the series, we're only looking at lines that have four or more action figures in the line. We're also looking at stuff from pre-2000, 80s, 90s mostly. Now, anyway, all out of the way, let's look at the Roger Rabbit line. This is the tale of an up-and-coming movie star named Roger Rabbit and a down-and-out private detective and stay out! named Eddie Valiant. Booga booga! Every moment they were together ah! was a new adventure in trouble. Hide me, Eddie! Please! 1988, Back to the Future director Robert Zemeckis 
blended real life with the cartoon world and asked the question of the year, who framed Roger Rabbit? The movie was released in June and will become the second biggest film of the year, making over $300 million worldwide on a $50 million budget. The film not only blended the human world and the cartoon world perfectly, it also blended the dark adult story that would appeal to kids also. To help kids reenact the movie at home, the studio turned to toy company video game maker LJN. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Now, Rainbow Company LJN released two different lines of toys the action figure line and the Bendems line. You know, Bendems. The plastic ones with the wire inside that you can kind of move and pose and everything. Everybody loves Bendems, right? You need to do a Star Wars Bendem episode. Anyway, we're not going to look at the Bendems. We're going to look at the action figures because this isn't a search for the worst Bendem action figure line. So we're just going to focus on the action figures, which there are only four of. Now, let's go to the first category, the look. Did they get the look right? Does this look like something you see in the film? Does it look like what the actors did in the movie? Well, let's take a look. Well, I can say this. Roger Rabbit does look like Roger Rabbit. The weasel isn't bad either. But once again, like some of the lines we've looked at, it's the humans that look bad in this line, although there are only two. Eddie was played by Bob Hoskins, and the action figure really doesn't look like him, except maybe dressed the same. But even worse than the Eddie figure is the Judge Doom. It looks more like a cartoon version of Judge Doom than what we see in the film. As for the overall look, the figures just look stiff and boring. They almost look like the Bendham figures LGN also released. It's hard at times to tell them apart. So, out of the 5 star ranking, how are we going to rank the look of these figures? Well, we're going to give the Roger Rabbit line 2 out of 5 stars. Saved only by those two cartoon figures. It's really hard to give a ranking when you only have four figures. Two bad ones and two good ones, or at least okay ones. Now that we've got the look out of the way, let's talk about the play value. Are these fun to play with? Do they come with accessories and ships and play sets and everything to make this a fun line for kids? Let's take a look. Well, they do come with accessories, if you want to call them that. If you call small handcuffs, a bird, and a cane good accessories, then you might like the line. But it really doesn't add much play value to the line. There was a car release for Roger Rabbit to sit in, which is a little bit more fun. But there's really not much fun to the action figure line here. Maybe if you had more than one action figure in the line, you could have fun playing together. But if you were just starting to collect this line, it wasn't really much fun at all. As I said, they do come with accessories, but these accessories really don't add much to the toy line. Maybe if the line has some button to make them kick or punch, it could have helped out a lot more. So, out of the 5 star ranking, let's rank the play value of these figures. We're going to give the Roger Rabbit play value 2 out of 5 stars. So we looked at that. Now let's go on to the packaging. This is a, something toy companies should get right because that's what you want. You want kids' attention in the store. When they walk down the toy aisle, seeing all the other great toys out there, you want to make sure their eyes catches the toys that you want to sell. So, did LJN do good at getting kids to notice the Roger Rabbit toys? Let's take a look. The title is clearly seen. That's really good. But the big font calling the action figures animates is a little confusing. I mean, what are animates? It does stay on the card that they are action figures. But why does animates need to be written so big? Like it's a selling point. It makes you think maybe they're animated. Maybe they move around. Maybe they do something. They look a lot like the Bendham figures. But the package does let you know that these are fully posable action figures. As for the bubble, it clearly shows the figure and the little extras you will get. This is good for kids to know what they're getting when they buy it. There's no image of the character from the film to really grab your attention. And the brick wall backdrop make the cars look really bland. The back of the card isn't much better. It does show the toy line, but that's about it. There's no information about the movie or the character you might be buying. So let's rank the packages of these figures out of five stars. What are we going to give it? The packaging of the Who Framed Roger Rabbit action figure line is going to get two out of five stars. 
We're on a roll here, two, two, and two. Now we're gonna look at marketing, something easy for the toy company to get. And I'm gonna stress this again because I seem like I have to say it in every video. And if I don't, someone comments about it. If you get a high score in the marketing, it doesn't have the same value as a high score in the look or the play value because marketing is so easy to get right. All you really need to do is release it within the time frame of the movie and have a little promotion on TV and stuff to help out also. So if this one gets a high rating, it doesn't hold the same value as the look or the play value. But if it gets a low rating, that weighs in a lot more on the final vote. So let's look at the marketing. Well, they did get the release time right. It was released a few weeks before the film. However, I could find no real promotion for this. No toy commercials. It seems LJN does very little toy commercials for their lines. There's really not much I can add here. They released the figures a few weeks before the film, and that's about it. It seems a movie like this would have gotten a bigger push. It's not like this was a surprise hit of the year, and no one expected kids to love it or want toys from it. It seems like the LJN just thought this was going to be a big flop and threw some toys out there really quick to make some money. So let's rank the Roger Rabbit line out of the 5 star system. And the marketing for the Roger Rabbit line gets a 3 out of 5 stars. There's really no marketing other than the time of the release, so that's why it gets a three. Horrible, horrible. I could see giving this a four, but it just seems like with a movie this big, there should have been a lot more push to get those sales. And again, maybe people didn't know how big this movie was going to be, but I don't think people really thought it was going to be a flop. So they really should have put more into the marketing. That's why I gave it a three instead of a four. But how's the quality? Do these toys hold up when you throw them at your little brother's head? Let's take a look. Well, these here are pretty good. This is the one I really have less to say about. If you throw it against the wall, it's probably going to break. They're cheap plastic, like a lot of the LGN toys. They crack really easy, but overall, just normal play, they'll be okay. Really, I can't add much more to this. It's okay. Like I said, you can play with it in your room, but as long as you're not throwing it around, you'll be okay. So let's rank the quality of the Roger Rabbit line. Out of the five stars, we're going to give the quality a four out of five stars. Man, this has been a fast video this week, hasn't it? Well, there are only four figures in here, so not like we can spend much time talking about each figure. Really, and it's such a basic, boring line, there's not really much you can add. I mean, it's not one of those lines that are so bad or so ugly that I can make fun of and talk about how bad it is, and it's not good either, so I can't sit here and talk about how good it is. So it's just a bleh line. But let's give it a final score. This line is nothing special. It's boring and it's bland. And that's why it's so bad. This movie was so fun. It had so much energy. This line should have been much better. It needed special features. More play value. Play sets. Cards. And, most of all, it needed a Jessica Rabbit action figure. How do you do an action figure line of Who Framed Roger Rabbit with no Jessica Rabbit? The look of the cartoon characters, the two of them, they look good, but that's easy to get right. The human characters seem like something just thrown together real fast to put in the market. Again, the play value is really lacking. This line could have been so much better. They could have done so many cool playsets with this. This line could have been a lot more than it was. As for the packaging, it's a boring brick wall with a figure on it. It doesn't look like much time and thought was put into the packaging at all. And it really doesn't scream by me to kids walking down the toy aisle. The marketing is very little. Like I said, no commercial, just throwing the figures out there a few weeks before the film's release. And overall quality, they hold up normal as much as you would expect from an LJN line. So, let's give a final ranking to the Who Framed Roger Rabbit action figure line. Out of the 5 star system, we're going to give this line 2 out of 5 stars. 2. That's right, 2 stars. I could easily maybe be pushing myself to giving this a three if it had a little bit more play value. And what really hurts this line is how good it should have been. Can you imagine a playset with this line? You could have the movie studio playset, the detective office playset, or maybe just a street playset with all the old timey looking buildings. And you could have so much play features. I mean, these the cartoons were so animated. You had so much you could do with this line. And no, LJN just said. Let's throw some rubber ones out there and some plastic ones out there and be done with it. Makes no sense at all. I don't understand. This could have been one of the best toy lines of the year for sure. And they failed at that. So that's a look at the Roger Rabbit line. And 
this is the end of our search for the worst action figure line based on a movie. So, did we find it? Was this the worst? Or have we already looked at the worst? Well, I'm going to give you a chance. Like I said, come back next Tuesday where I'm going to do a recap show and tell you how you can vote for the worst action figure line ever based on a movie. And not only will you be voting for the worst action figure line, you'll be voting for the worst of each category. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to see what you guys say. And don't forget, also in the recap show, we're going to go over some other bad toy lines that should have made the list. Thank you for watching. As always, please subscribe to the channel, thumbs up, and in the comments section, let me know what you think about the Roger Rabbit action figure line. Did you have them? Did you even know about them? Let me know in the comments below, and until the next video, we'll talk again. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.